Hello and welcome, everybody, to episode 33 of Last Week in Quantum. I'm your host, Bill Roth, self-proclaimed Silicon Valley marketing genius. This is the show where we review this week's news in the world of quantum, its impacts on cybersecurity, AI, and more. With us to discuss is, of course, our all-star panel, which includes Brandon Dennis, Director of Operations at QSecure. Welcome, Brandon. Thank you, Bill. And the big guy, Dave Krauthammer, uh, co-founder and CEO of QSecure. Welcome, Dave. Hey, Bill. Hey, Brandon. How are you guys? Awesome. So last week in Quantum, um, we there's been a, a, a bunch of articles... The, on the future of AI that we're talking about unleashing the power of quantum machine learning. And let's go through these articles and see what we can uh, come up with. So Brandon, the first one, the future of AI unleashing the power of quantum machine learning from Forbes. Tell us a little bit about that one. Yeah, we have a technical article that explores the potential of combining quantum computing with machine learning to revolutionize artificial intelligence. Dave, I wanted to get your take. How does quantum computing and machine learning complement each other in the advancing of AI capabilities? Yeah, great, great question. So, you know, we use ChatGPT, we use LLMs to do cool stuff, write your term paper. I've never written a term paper with ChatGPT. Actually, I haven't. Um, and these large language models are largely linear. We, we scrape all the data from everywhere on the planet and put them in a big database. And and uh, Sam Altman from OpenAI said he's he's trying to raise seven trillion dollars for enough compute for the next uh, LLM. But these LLMs they're very expensive and huge because we're trying to process vast amounts of data linearly, which is very expensive. And um, the question is, where can we go from here? We've got these cool models that will help you write your term paper or write a poem. But are they going to lead us toward general intelligence and uh, artificial general intelligence or AGI? And um, some people think yes, some people think no. I'm in the no camp because I think that for us to really create intelligence, um, we're going to need to look at the problem in a very different way, in a quantum way, where we can, where these MP squared problems, we're not looking at literally, we're absorbing all the information at once and analyzing it. So quantum um, and machine learning take us out of this kind of linear space of compute where I have to build these huge, massive data centers to process large language models. And we're going to run out of space on the planet to process this stuff. Um, if I'm spending $7 trillion to house my model, it's problematic. And the opportunity with quantum is that then I can look at these problems in a non-layer way, like our brain works and like the world works, like nature works around us. And we're all moving on this quest for good or bad to get to artificial general intelligence. Some believe it's now going to happen in 2027. It was 2029, it was 2035. But, you know, this kind of entry into sentient computing or sentient capabilities um, will be ushered in largely, I believe, by quantum capabilities that let us process immense sums of data um, at once. So interesting, exciting future. We got to manage it correctly and make sure it's secure. But, interesting. Well, thanks, Dave. A uh, quick reminder, folks: you can find all of the links to today's articles in the show notes. Uh, if you want weekly quantum updates, subscribe to our YouTube channel and podcasts on Spotify, Apple, YouTube, Music, iHeartRadio, and wherever you find uh, world-renowned podcasts. Stay up to date with the top news in quantum with Last Week in Quantum. Second article coming up uh, was um, a uh, an article kind of roughly, you know, in, uh, it was nature, and it really talked about... Um, the basically kind of combinatorial optimization, combinatorial explosion. Brandon, tell us about it. Yeah, this is a uh, super <clears throat> technical article for the podcast this week. Uh, so it studies the performance of scaling of uh, three quantum algorithms for combinatorial optimization. Dave, uh, 
very uh there's a lot to cover in this one but why does the combinatorial explosion suggest a problem for the development of the next generation of ai what are your thoughts sure so combinatorial explosion what's that a combinatorial explosion <laughs> it's, a, it's an explosion in the combinations of things i need to look at complex article thanks for throwing at that at me bill <laughs> but i think one of the challenges is you know how do we deal with these massive combinatorial explosions um, and quantum is a potential solution for them. Um, right now, we're seeing a lot of increases in the qubit count. Um, we still have error rates associated with those that are making it difficult to actually get to a point where these algorithms are yielding benefit. Um, so you see a couple camps. Some of the camps are like, well, this is problematic. We're not seeing a, a speed up in these fundamental equations. Um, but there is a path that really revolves around error correction to get us there. And think about the outcome of this. So if I'm the company that can predict the weather or predict the stock market, because I have figured this out, then I rule the world. So right now um, they're bringing up that there's still some fundamental problems in optimizing these algorithms, these quantum algorithms to gain yield in speed up. But when they do, when they do, I hope I'm the one who owns the model that predicts the stock market because uh, you'll be a really rich person if you do that. Um, this, is a, this is a hard path. I mean, anyone in the quantum field understands this is the hard path. You're on the hard path. Making, making atoms so there's, they can be completely controlled is really a problem. So um, th this article focused on some of the challenges associated with that, with getting these algorithms to perform in a combinatorial explosive manner. And, um, but I, I feel like we're on the path there and we're moving forward really quickly. Excellent. Thanks, Dave. So there was another article about, Dar uh, you know, a, a reference from DARPA, but, um, you said before we started taping that you saw generally a thread and you touched on it briefly. Uh, but tell us a little bit more about kind of the thread that you saw uh, to kind of weave through this week's articles. Yeah, I, I think as the, the, we're at a fundamental tipping point in human, in human history, and that is we have the opportunity of creating capabilities, compute capabilities that are smarter than us, that can think like us only better. Um, and so I think if you look, if you zoom out, and go where are we headed as humankind. Um, we're racing towards this point where now they're saying in maybe 2027 we'll have sentient computing. Um, and the path there is through these quantum capabilities that turn compute from a nonlinear problem to to from a, to a nonlinear problem. So I just I I, I want to be super optimistic about it. Like I think we can use this what's happening right now for really the good of humankind can also be used for a lot of bad stuff. There's a lot of debate about how we get there. So these articles are really focused on like, how do I optimize a piece? So when you talk about AI, you're talking about linear computing, GPT, but this whole category of articles and stuff is now, how do we create what's next? And uh, what is next? And what happens when we have, you know, someone who has Bill's intelligence and Brandon's charm and, and, um, and that's coming in two years. And that will be ushered in by quantum artificial intelligence. It merely mimics nature, the brain, and how things happen. So I think these are all steps and we're moving there. I think we're moving there quicker than anyone really understands is, is my point. And so these are little elements, but if you zoomed all the way out, it's about creating this sentient capability that can, that can understand every data point in real time and then translate that into action. And I'm excited about it. There are a lot of people who are really nervous about it, but I'm personally excited about it and would love to get your perspective before we sign off, guys. You know, my own view on this is that, I mean, I'm reminded of what Edgar Dijkstra, I, Edgar Dijkstra once said, the famous computer scientist. He said, um, asking whether a computer can think is like asking if a submarine can swim. And so, there may be a situation where this kind of intelligence is 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 sort of fundamentally different. I I think I I don't think we know. Um, I'm also somewhat suspect 
I mean, we were supposed to have artificial intelligence solved by the end of the summer in 1959. So I'm always a little bit skeptical, um, sort of about this. Um, but uh, I, given the way things are pro uh, progressing, I very well could be wrong. I don't know, Brandon, if you've got any kind of comments on that. It's almost like Game of Thrones. It's uh, winter is coming, right? The the quantum AI sentient threat or uh, benefit to society is coming. Uh, I'm here for the ride. I can't wait to to see what changes it brings to our world. I'm going to make a prediction, guys, okay. and you can you can you can go back and on this prediction. In 2027, we will have some form of sentient AI, and I'm going to make a prediction that it will be largely be used for good. It might irritate us a lot, but it's largely going to be used for good. Well, folks, you heard that here. Mark those words. And uh, sometime in December 2027, we will look back on this uh, for, you know, probably something like episode 150. So, hey, folks, that's all for today's show. Show number 33. I'm your host, Bill Roth, and with us, with us this week has been the avuncular and convivial Brandon Dennis, Director of Operations, and the big guy, Dave Krauthammer, co-founder and CEO of Q-Secure. Thank you to you both. Thanks, gentlemen. Awesome. Always a hoop. Thanks, guys. That was fun. All right. We'll see you next week on Last Week in Quantum.